Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to talk about how to implement different type of boundary conditions on parabolic PDs or the PDs in which we have first order time derivative and any order of special derivative or reaction terms on the right hand side like the PDs that I talked about in the previous lecture of method of lines. So I'm going to show you the implementation of different type of boundary condition on a simple 1D heat equation, but these are applicable to all the PDs which have first order time derivative and anything on the right hand side. So first of all, I'm going to talk about Dirichlet boundary conditions. We are already implementing these boundary condition in our previous eight lectures, where our sample code has zero and zero on the left and right side. We will just modify those code instead of writing zero, zero on the boundary condition we will write a and b and this general equation actually has an analytical solution so i have written this solution just to compare the results before i go into coding i need to specify some values my l my left and right boundary condition and my initial condition so i've chosen these values and my initial condition i chose it to be something that should satisfy the boundary condition also when we are at initial condition i talked about this issue when we developed method of line course if the boundary values are not same at our initial condition, this will not give us correct result. And also it is not sensible to have different boundary condition on the initial condition because boundary conditions are the ones that should always stay the same. I also need to define alpha that is a parameter over here and I define it to be 0.1. In terms of implementing these boundary conditions in the course of numerical method to solve partial differential equations, we first need to define our space node and time node. So I'm going to use i variable for spatial nodes and n variable for time nodes if my total number of nodes are going to be capital n then my first node will be at i is equal to 1 and my last node will be at i is equal to n and there will be many nodes inside them with some spacing and this spacing will be known as delta x or i will introduce this as variable dx when i will be doing coding so that means my left boundary condition at i is equal to 1 for all time at any time boundary will always be equal to a and my right boundary at i is equal to end or i is equal to capital N. My right boundary for any time will always be B. To make this video short, I'm going to implement these boundary condition on the FTCS code. That was the first code that we developed in lecture series and method of lines code. And at the end, we're going to compare our results with the analytical solution if exist, which in this case is this solution and it is four year series solution. So our parameters here that we defined over L is one. I'm going to uh, run this code till time is equal to T is equal to one and alpha in our case is 0 0.1 and I'm not going to play with these variable and we talked about them when we developed FTCS code that this small d is the convergence constant that depends on the alpha time step and the spatial step. Now the things of our concern are the boundary conditions and the initial condition. So while we were developing the code we set the boundary condition to be 0 and 0 but in this case we are going to set them as A and B. They are Dirichlet boundary condition, they are constant boundary condition so our first column of U and our last column of U will always stay as constant number. So I have chosen my A is equal to 1, B is equal to and my F underscore X which is my function of X to be sine pi x over 2 plus 1 and my, I'm going to set my left boundary condition to a and right boundary condition to b and my initial condition which is going to be first row of u as f of x and this small x should be same as the x that you introduce for your spatial mesh and that's it and this is the only thing you need to change if you want to apply different type of Dirichlet boundary conditions. I'm going to run this code to see some results. Okay, let's do method of lines code and then we will compare at the end with analytical solution. So in our method of lines code, I'm going to set my alpha value. My time is going to run till t is equal to 1. My spatial value is ending at l is equal to 1. So here, and this is my initial condition. And the boundary conditions we are going to set in the PDE function. As we know from the previous lecture, in method of lines, we use OD solver. I'm not going to explain all these things here and after getting back from the method of lines uh, I will have t values and u values so the rows of u will contain the spatial mesh at every time step and I'm going to plot it on the same figure that we produce from the FTCS method. Now inside the function what we need to uh, do is we need to define our a and b values so our loop here will run from i is equal to 1 till the last value of the spatial node that is stored in small n so at the left boundary I will set u i th value as a that means the derivative of u with respect time is zero and on the right boundary when i equal equal to n I will set u i th value equals to b that is my right boundary condition and of course the derivative at that time will be equal to zero otherwise at the inner node how we are going to calculate the derivative of u with respect to time this is going to be defined by the right hand side of the PDE that we have here 
So we discretize the second derivative with second order central differences. So let's run this code and see the results. As you see, there was blue line from the previous code and these orange stars are covering that blue line. To make sure that our results are correct, we are going to compare these solutions with analytical solution. So I have created a file that is going to produce the plots of this analytical solution. I'm not going into the details of this code. If you want this code, I'm going to put that in the description of this video. Okay, so in this code, I'm going to run till time t is equal to 1, 0, 2, 1. This is my initial condition, my a and b values. And let's see if we run this code, what will happen? So you see the blue line was my FTCS solution and these orange stars are my analytical solution. So they are actually overlapping on each other. So let's talk about some other boundary conditions. So we have example two in which my left boundary condition is Newman boundary condition. Newman boundary condition is the one where we have a derivative instead of simple U value. So I have Newman boundary condition on the left boundary x equal to zero while Richley boundary condition on the right boundary x is equal to L. In this case, the analytical solution exists and that is this, but we are going into the coding. Before we go into the coding, we will again examine the same thing. If my left boundary condition is Newman boundary condition, that means partial u by partial x at x equal to zero means partial u by partial x at i is equal to one for all time is going to be a. Now we know how to approximate this derivative numerically. We can apply forward di difference scheme also, but to improve the approximation, we usually use the central difference scheme. But for central difference scheme, there comes the concept of ghost point. Because if I apply the central difference scheme here, I will have something like this. So u i plus one, u i minus one divided by two delta x. Now I am standing at i is equal to one. If I do i minus one, so this will be my u zero. And there is no zeroth position when we have array in MATLAB. To do this, we use the concept of ghost point. One of the easiest about implementing ghost point is just isolate your i minus one term from here like this. And when you are at i is equal to one and you are approximating your PDE, wherever you see i minus one, just put this expression for i minus one. I'm going to show you in a while. And the right boundary condition is simple. So it's the Dirichlet boundary condition. So if I go into FTCS code, now we cannot define the left boundary condition here because it is not constant anymore. It, it is going to vary at every time step. To include the left boundary condition in our solver, we will start our spatial mesh from one. We're going to include the left node also. So since I have included i is equal to one, so I have to specify what will happen when I am at i equal equal to one. Of course, this is not going to be the same as the inner nodes. If I do that, the MATLAB is going to throw me an error because I will not have i minus one value when I am at i equal equal to one because i minus one corresponds to zero and there is no zero value in the array. So what I'm going to do when I am at the left boundary or i equal equal to one, I'm going to put the expression for this value because this is the value that we isolated when we are doing something like it here. So I'm going to put this expression, small brackets, and that's it. So this is how we implemented the Newman boundary condition on the left boundary. Let's do a test run. These are the parameters that I'm going to use for the test run. And my initial condition is such that it satisfies the right Dirichlet boundary condition when I'm at x is equal to 1. So I have set these parameters over here and let's run this. This is the result that I got and let's do it with MOL. So in the MOL code, first I'm going to set my initial condition, my A and B values. Now in the MOL code, we already have if else condition for the boundary conditions also. So on the left boundary, my U value is not constant anymore. That means my derivative of U with respect to time is not constant. It will also be something similar to this, but I cannot have u i minus one value when I'm at i equals to one. So I'm going to substitute the expression that I have from here. So u i minus one value will be u i plus one value minus two times a times over step size. So if I run this code, you will see that the orange star actually are lying on this blue line. Let's go to the analytical solution. And you can see if I run the analytical solution, the orange stars are lying on the blue line. Blue line was from FTCS and the orange stars now are the analytical solution. In the similar manner, if you are going to have the Newman boundary condition on the right and Richley on the left, you can also have an analytical solution in that case. And how to implement that? So in this case, when you are at i is equal to capital N or you are at i is equal to end or last node, you cannot have end plus one node. So this node is going to be your end plus one node, and this is going to be end minus one node. So you will have end minus one node that, is, that exists inside, but you cannot have end plus one node. So in this case, we will again use the concept of ghost point, and then you will isolate you end plus one expression from here, or you i plus one expression from here. And whenever you are on the right boundary, you will put this expression 
when you will see UI plus one in your PDE solver. Okay, let's go toward implementing this in coding. So in the FTCS code, now my left boundary is a constant boundary and my right boundary is Newman boundary condition. So left boundary, I will specify it outside, but for the right boundary, I have to do it inside the solver loop. Now I have to develop another case here. I will just comment this for a moment. Maybe we need the Newman boundary condition at the both hand. And my i will start from 2 because my i is equal to 1 value is constant that I already defined outside the loop. And I will go till capital N now because my right boundary should be included in this loop. So I have copy pasted the same thing that was in my else loop or for my inner nodes. But the problem here is I cannot have i plus 1 value now. So I will replace this i plus 1 value from the expression that we derived over here. So this is now i plus 1 value in terms of i minus 1 and this is how we are going to compute our solution at i equal equal to capital N. So I'm going to run this code for the same parameter that we used in the previous example. Let's run this. This is the result from FTCS method. Now in case of method of lines, I'm going to use the same parameter, but I have to change my right boundary condition to Newman boundary condition. So my left boundary condition is not Newman anymore. That means my left boundary condition will be something like where your ith value should be a and the derivative with respect to time is zero. But my right boundary is not constant anymore. So I'm going to copy paste the same expression that is the expression to solve the PDE or the heat equation. And now I will not have UI plus one value anymore when I am at the last node. And this I plus one value, I will replace that from this expression that we derive. Okay, so let's compare the results. I'm going to run this code and you see the orange stars are lying on the, the blue line. But this orange star is different and guess why? This is because the initial condition has a different value at the left boundary than the boundary condition. Let's run the analytical solution and if I run this you will see that the orange stars are lying on the FTCS solution and that's it. In all these problem the solution I am showing is the x versus u at the last time step. The last time is t is equal to 1 in all of these sample runs. We can modify the same course if we have Newman boundary condition on the both hands. For example if I have Newman boundary condition on both hands I will not have constant boundary condition in FTCS. That means my I equal equal to one will be approximated like this and I equal equal to capital N will be approximated like this. And my loop for I will run from I is equal to one to N. And it should give me some result. Like this is the result when I have Newman boundary condition on the both end at last time step. Similarly from method of lines code, if I have Newman boundary condition on both end, I will specify them like this. And if I run this, it should overlap with my FTCS code. I couldn't get the analytical solution for general Newman boundary condition on the both end. But if you get that from somewhere, I hope this will match with that result. The last type of boundary condition I want to discuss here are Robin boundary condition, which is the linear combination of u and the derivative of u equals to some constant. If you want to implement the Robin boundary condition, you will do the same thing like we were doing earlier. If the Robin boundary condition was at the left end at x equal to zero, you are going to isolate your i minus one term because you cannot go before the first node. So if you isolate it something like this, so you will put this expression when you are at i equal equal to one for i minus one. If Robin condition appears on the right boundary, you cannot go till n plus one x is equal to n plus 1 that means you will isolate i plus 1 ui plus 1 value from this expression. I think you already got the idea what to do so I'm not going to do that here in the coding. That's it for this video lecture see you in next video.